You know, one of the greatest drawbacks in our country is though it is supposed to be the largest democracy in the world, in fact, only a very small microscopic educated minority controls the lives of millions and millions of illiterates and half-literates. Democracy cannot be meaningful and purposeful unless it is participatory. It's typical that you will find a correlation between increase of literacy and uh, the, um, uh, the growth of a more participatory form of government or state, irrespective of uh, the ideology of the state that may differ from country to country. You see, democracy is unreal and incomplete without literacy among the people. See, literacy is a very fundamental requirement to participate in a democratic process. With little or no land holdings in the village, the labouring poor are driven to the city for survival. Lured by the prospect of a better life, they come to the city only to find themselves dispossessed, alienated and ruthlessly exploited. Poor and unlettered, they live shattered and insecure lives at the very edge of society. They are a grim reminder of the economic and social disparities that exist in our society. Social disparities are more clearly and sharply present in the field of literacy than perhaps in any other field. Because, you know, if you, I give you two figures, in the district of Kutayam, urban, non-scheduled male literacy is 100%. In Jaisalmer, rural, scheduled caste, women literacy is 0.6%. I'm talking about India, not of Germany and Uganda. There are two parts of India, and this is the difference from 100% to less than 1%. Like I was in a district called Sidi, a totally tribal district. Literacy there, when I was there, was around 20%. Then I, at, at another time, I was in Indore, where literacy is well above 50%. And I found that whatever program we took in Indore, the response of the people, the end result was much better. But if we had to take a program in Sidi, uh, we, we faced all kinds of difficulties because our first task was to explain it to the people and then when the people are not educated, the, the middleman, the bureaucracy, the entire system exploits them and the, the, the results and the advantages of our schemes, our projects don't reach them. In a modern industry where more sophisticated technologies have to be applied in order to get better quality goods and higher and higher level of productivity has to be achieved, yeah, yeah, learning, learning, for formal learning, a formal literacy is very essential. For example, take many of our um, engineering plants, take Maruti, or for that matter, a steel plant. Uh, even an ordinary employee is expected to read a drawing, read the manuals. If you follow strictly the technological discipline, you have to naturally follow certain procedures. And here again, every time we innovate a new thing, 
be it for energy conservation or for simplifying work procedure or building quality or reliability in the product. We change our procedures, we change our uh, methods of um, manufacture. The person should be agile enough to understand and adapt himself. And this is not possible only by the word of mouth. In a small establishment, it is possible. You can even take him out and train. But in a large establishment, where such things have to be understood through literature, published literature and uh, classroom lectures, a, a level of literacy is very essential in order to attain higher levels of productivity. Many of our development programs, many of our anti-poverty programs uh, assumes that uh, everybody is literate. And that is why they are designed in such a way where they have to fill up so many forms, they have to go to all these big uh, bank offices and government offices. And that is why they have to deal with the formal world and with the official and also with the government world. And there they feel very much disadvantaged. Uh, and that is why we so often find uh, that uh, there are some middlemen or, or uh, some kingpins uh, who have been sort of dominating all our programs uh, at the grassroots level, at the village level, and they take over, sort of. Not only edu edu economy, that's why it is to be pointed out. People sometimes think that only by economic development, the weaker section, the tribals, the shirulkas, they will advance. No, that's why they say that we, the economic and the educational, both, development are needed, is needed for their emancipations. Unfortunately, in our system, we have been linking literacy with jobs. People invariably say, if you're going to make someone literate, are you going to provide him a job? The key issue is literacy is required for self-respect, self-esteem, and to be an active member in the democratic process. पढ़ना लिखना सीखो ओ मेहनत करने वालों पढ़ना लिखना सीखो ओ भूख से मरने वालों literacy is at the beginning of social awareness and genuine democratic participation. It gives a voice to the poor and language to the unlettered to seek and obtain justice and equity. How can there be participation in the absence of education and literacy? I think that this adult education has a very positive role to play to make democracy really alive and functioning in this country. Some people express their fears or whatever you call it, apprehension, that this may lead to a conflict situation. I definitely think that it will be, it will not lead to any conflict situation. On the other hand, it will lead to lessening of tension because the powerful sections take advantage of the illiteracy and ignorance of the poorer sections of the people. Once they realize that they are also cognizant about their rights, their privileges, they will think twice before they try to exploit them again. So far, the literacy movement has been sort of a philanthropic movement. Literacy movement cannot succeed as a philanthropic movement uh, by feeling that some people, uh, the rulers uh, or the parties say, no, no, our uh, country should be more literate, little more literate. No, little more literate is no good. Kothari Commission has suggested in 1966 itself the if literacy movement is to succeed, it has to be done on a war footing. It can succeed in five years. It cannot succeed in 10 years or 15 years. To my mind, the political climate question really boils down to saying 
that uh, there's, there's got to be um, a wider assurance. Uh, uh, there's got to be a wider um, sort of uh, message given by uh, the state apparatus that um, it is interested um, in um, remedying the situations of mass scale oppression of people. What I mean is that you cannot have a situation where you are, uh, say, where the state is neglecting uh, the needs of, uh, let's say, lakhs of people in a context like Bhopal, uh, where uh, people have been waiting for years now after the world's greatest disaster, industrial disaster, took place there for basic minimum measures of legal and medical redressal. You can't have millions of people waiting like that for, you know, uh, their bit of justice, and at the same time expect uh, that a literacy initiative will succeed. You cannot be uh, usurping millions of people, say, across the Narbada Valley, off their homes in the cause of a developmental activity, and at the same time expect that a literacy drive will succeed in that area. If you want anyone to be educated in that adult group of 15 to 35 in tribal areas, the first and foremost thing is that we must compensate for the wage loss that occurs because he is coming to our school or our adult education unit. Secondly, we will have to revise our curriculum according to his own milieu. Third, we will have to teach him in his own dialect in the, in the earlier days. And fourth, we will also have to send very highly motivated people in tribal areas. Because today, if you go to a tribal area, there would hardly be a school where all the teachers are coming. There would hardly be a school where the teachers are spending the entire time in the school. I think that if we can really design adult education programs in such a way to remove the drudgery of the rural women, it will really help them. And then they will be on par with the men who become literate first. Why they are lagging behind is that we have not really conceived of programs which will impart adult education, literacy, functional literacy, and at the same time help them to do their jobs better and find some facilitating factors to do their work. For instance, from morning till evening, several hours they spent to collect fuel wood and water. Have we done enough to bring water to the doorstep of every rural woman? They collect fuel. Have we helped them to find better alternative for fuel and not struggle with the wet firewood all the time? Gender disparity in our society is extreme manifest in the fact that most girls have no schooling or drop out early from primary school and they are tutored through the work they have to do all the time. You know, to my mind, uh, it is high time that we change the priority even in the field of education. We may spend a lot of money uh, on uh, higher education. But when the base itself is not strong, you know, there is no, uh, no point in doing it. You know, today we take uh, great uh, uh, pride in saying that uh, India has uh, the largest technical and scientific uh, personnel, uh, personnel, largest pool of personnel. But we conveniently forget that we also constitute the largest illiterate population. Some 30 crores of people are illiterate at the time of our independence. 81, instead of decreasing, now we have got 43 crore illiterate people. And it is said, at this rate, we will be entering the 21st century with 50 crores of illiterate people. And at that time, the India will have 50% of the world's total illiterate people in, uh, in one country. And India will be the biggest and uh, greatest illiterate nation of the world. This is a very sad affairs for a country which boasts of 
we see one third of the technical manpower of the uh, of, um, of the world. In fact, I see that um, it's the neglect of primary education uh, over uh, 40 years uh, that has resulted in the present state of illiteracy in the country. Uh, this very wide um, stratum of an illiterate population that you see um, is um, uh, an accumulated product of the neglect of primary education over this long period of time. And unfortunately, uh, even today when we are talking of adult literacy and adult education, we are not talking of any more effective programs of primary education. The importance of adult education, as I see it, is that without an adult education program, even the universalization of primary education cannot succeed. So to uh, make the primary education universal, as a parallel adult education program has to be, uh, has to be there. Whenever we, we have tried to relate the literacy program along with, uh, uh, say, dealing with uh, the daily problems of life, of their work, uh, then it has, a, it has worked. For example, we have cooperatives. We have our own cooperative uh, seva bank, where everybody is, every depositor or loanee is supposed to be uh, who knows how to sign. So when we had to register our bank, the registrar said that how can you have banking with uh, all these illiterate women? But we said uh, that uh, no, but this is the majority with uh, whom we want to work because they are, uh, they are economically very active. Ultimately, we found that a way uh, that where, uh, a, where a photograph is pasted on the passbook. But because, you know, she didn't like to have a photograph, that motivated her to put her signature. And then later on, uh, we had every month we had a massive campaign uh, and then giving prizes to all those who learned to sign. And f after learning the signature, then they also wanted to read their pasuk that what is uh, the balance and how much is uh, sort of debited and, uh, yes, and credited. So that is how then later they started learning numeracy. The problems of how to teach, for example, the monsoons. Now, you can teach it at the MSc level and in the PhD level, but you have to teach it even to the adult literate because it is through the monsoon in the village, for example. Nowadays, we have, we have the problem that the monsoon has been delayed or is coming early. Everybody's eyes are looking towards the clouds. Now, there is a time when you have a proper package on the monsoon, the peasant son, the adult peasant who is not educated would really welcome it with open arms. In fact, the teaching contents and the material for teaching, teaching aids must change from group to group. And in this way, if the animators are helped to find and sense the needs of the learners and tailor their programs to meet them, I am sure the program will become very, very popular. In addition, the program should not remain isolated. It is very important to connect the program, to link the program with all the development work that is taking place in the particular area. For instance, immunization of children. That must also be an incentive for adult learners to know about immunization, to immunize their children. Small savings, small family norm, better seeds, better techniques of agriculture, social forestry, all these development programs must be linked up with adult education, and adult education must link up those development programs. My own conviction is that this we cannot do through the government, because to get people with missionary zeal, to get people who are motivated in government is difficult, and that is why a great deal of voluntary effort will have to go in in this area. It is easy to say it won't work. It's very easy to say that. You know, that's, that's a uh, sign of a defeatist. Okay. That we can always do, we can always walk out, you know, say, too bad, you know, can't do it. That's not the attitude we are taking. We have to create an environment of enthusiasm. We have to be positive. We have to have what I call contagious enthusiasm and optimism. When we have that, people will join. Performance of Vigyan Jatha, 
for various parts of the country big gun jatha came and they showed their performance and in dhanbad when it they came we directed them to the remotest part of the villages the tribal areas and also the working class areas and we found that in this performance there was a lot of response lot of people uh, witnessed that performance and some interest is created people first time people felt that science technology and education they are not something of very elitist nature uh, but they are a part of our life part of our society part of our and that could be made a part of our living also and so similarly we proposed that instead of like bigyan jatha we should we should start some gang jatha from all corners and it should be jointly sponsored by the social uh, organizations plus the government of the educational department of the state and the center so that a movement is created in the term in the form of uh, for for literacy and only then it this could be done i think we need uh, first of all uh, very quick uh, sort of method to teach and to learn i always say that these women who have been so good at madhubani painting who have been so good at uh, see at chicken work at this kachi embroidery which is so famous all over the world they are so good with their fingers and with their skills and with their mind why can't we sort of deva uh, sort of derive uh, a method by which uh, they can learn literacy in no time it is here that you know the mission would make this kind of a thing impossible if you have decided that you are going to do it as a coordinated activity then it is not somebody else's job to do it it's your job to do it and in this sense i hope that the new experiment would succeed because this calls for left and the right hand and the left and the right foot all <laughs> moving in the same direction i have said time and time again that this cannot be the program of the ministry of education nor it could be a program of the state government or the central government it has to be the program of the people only people can make it happen